It's always a pleasure to have you join us. A very good evening from wherever you're tuning into. My name is Marie Yambo. Our social media handles at Marie Yambo and at KBC Channel One on Twitter, KBC Channel One TV on Facebook. Today it's all about hearing loss. What is it all about? What causes it? and how can you prevent it? Well, according to the World Health Organization, the WHO, by 2050, nearly 2.5 billion people are projected to have some degree of hearing loss and at least 700 million, or one in every 10 people, will require hearing rehabilitation. Over 1 billion young adults, according to the WHO, are at risk of permanent avoidable hearing loss due to unsafe listening practices. Well, to talk to us about hearing loss, and how it comes about is Dr. Isaac Wahome, who is a clinical audiologist. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Wahome, for making time. But first, before we even get into the topic of the day, who is or what does a clinical audiologist do? Perfect. Thank you very much, uh, viewers. And uh, really to just dive in is to tell you that a clinical audiologist is a specialist who deals with hearing and balance. So basically our practice uh, relates in terms of diagnosing uh, any issues with hearing from children, adults, uh, and you know, it doesn't matter the age, race, we just do assessment and uh, rehabilitate these people with different devices and we shall talk about them. Yeah, Yes. definitely. Mm -hmm. So let's start from the beginning. What is hearing loss? Okay. Because then we need to understand between hearing loss and deafness. All right. Yeah. So I think just to start off is uh, first is to understand what is hearing. And hearing basically uh, we have a channel that goes from the ear uh, to the brain. The brain is a feeder. The brain feeds information from the ear. And the work of the ear, number one, is to translate uh, sound mechanical sounds that we uh, perceive them as vibration and they convert that uh, through a mechanism that is complex in nature uh, so that whatever is fed in the brain we are able to interpret, perceive it and basically uh, uh, you know respond with a command uh, either motor or sensory command. Uh, but now when you talk about hearing loss is that now when that mechanism is not functional, when it's not working, and the simplest way we understand that is that, for example, when you go in an office or at home and somebody calls uh, you by the name and you don't respond, uh, or they tell you a certain command and you can't respond back, uh, it becomes frustrating, uh, it becomes embarrassing, and the reason why you don't respond is that you can't be able to hear them. Mm -hmm. So basically that is now what we refer as hearing loss in, in, in simple terms. But when you talk about the science, the ideological science, is that uh, when you are not able to perceive, according to the WHO, decibels in adults of 41 and in children of 31 in a normal conversation, in a better ear, then we, you are referred as somebody who has a hearing loss. Mm -hmm. So there's a science and a practice behind that that involves hearing tests uh, and evaluation that now we come up with a diagnosis of hearing loss, what type of hearing loss, and so on. Okay. And, mm. and like you said, you diagnose the type of hearing loss and all that. Yes. So there are different categories of hearing loss. Perfect, you yes. know, from, um, can I say, mild, moderate yes. to severe. Yes. So at what point then... Mm -hmm. When you talk about hearing loss, this is now major mm -hmm. because it's no longer just a mild, you know, um, uh, experience where maybe I just did not hear you, mm -hmm. but now it's becoming like a routine. Yes. So at what point, w how do you categorize that? Yeah, so the category goes into different classifications. So we talk about, uh, so the normal hearing, we have normal hearing. And then we have now from normal, the next stage is mild hearing loss. So and mild hearing loss ranges from around 20 to around 40. And then we have moderate hearing loss, which starts from around 41 to around uh, uh, 50 uh, or 55. Uh, and then we have moderately severe and then severe. And then how we have profound. And then, of course, we have now like a dead ear. Uh, so these are stages or classifications of hearing loss. and. 
it does not mean that when you have a mild hearing loss, you're going definitely to the next stage. Mm -hmm. You can start from any stage, any time. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you can have somebody randomly coming to a clinic and has mild hearing loss, another one has profound, another one has severe, and so, so on. So it doesn't go from one level to, to the, the other level. one. So you can find yourself with a, can I say, severe hearing yes. loss, depending on what could have happened. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and then... Um, you, you know, um, we'll get to the diagnosis mm -hmm. of uh, hearing loss yes. um, uh, and all that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, mm -hmm. where do we categorize deafness? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Because I'm not so sure that somebody can just wake up and become deaf, but yeah. you're the doctor, you'll yeah. be able to. Yeah, so I mean, like, uh, so for deafness, uh, with the WHO, we usually call, there are some terminologies that we use, and these are tom common terminologies. You'll hear things like disability, you'll hear like disabling hearing loss, you'll hear deafness, and so on. Uh, so hearing loss is hearing loss. Uh, but for the sake of understanding, especially for the public, they refer all types of hearing loss as deafness. And but for us, when we talk about deafness, sometimes there's a terminology that we call disabling hearing loss. Mm -hmm. In other words, something that is, uh, is uh, obstructing you to do functional uh, duties, social interaction, and so on. So something that is disabling you in terms of functioning properly. Uh, but sometimes the commonest uh, terminology or what we hear is deafness, and when you're told that you're deaf, uh, most people refer to people who are using sign language. Mm -hmm. And this is a category of hearing loss, mostly that is profound hearing loss. So these are people who are not able to perceive sound, or if they are able to perceive sounds, is from 91 decibels. And 91 decibels is like the siren of an ambulance. So at a one meter distance, or you know, like when you stretch your hand, and they are able to hear that siren as you know a faint sound or something that is close to something so, so ideally you're really shouting yeah, ideally you're really meter. shouting like an ambulance you know mm -hmm. it's like that siren okay. so that one is like 91 decibel you are deaf you can't be able to perceive mm -hmm. and naturally we don't talk at 91 decibels we talk about 30 when we are having like this conversation it's around 35 40 decibels so somebody who has a loss up to 91 it's really you have to shout. Mm -hmm. And human beings, as we know them, we don't walk and we don't talk shouting. Yeah. Uh, so these are people who are able now to have other alternative ways of communicating mm -hmm. that includes sign language, mm -hmm. lip reading, and you know they look at your body language, what mm -hmm. you want to tell them, mm -hmm. and they try to have some cues, mm -hmm. uh, either visual cues of what to do next. Okay. So these are the people that we usually say, in real sense, they, they, they have some deafness of some sort. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now just delving into the causes, but because I can see you've come with some gadgets yes. over here, so you'll be taking us through them yes. and, and what they are all about. Yeah. But let's very quickly talk about the causes yes. of hearing loss, and especially we are targeting people who have had a normal hearing, mm -hmm. but all of a sudden, either one year or both years, you yes. tend to be struggling to, yeah. to hear to people. Hear. Yeah. yeah, yeah. so really the easiest way we can, uh, thanks to Widex uh, for giving us some, you know, some dummies. So the, real w the, the easiest way to understand the causes is now knowing your anatomy, knowing what part of the ear is affected. Uh, and from this dummy you can see we have the outer ear. Okay. So the outer ear is, is like a, is the conveyor. It's like a funnel. Okay. It's what basically picks sounds from the environment mm -hmm. and transmits it uh, through the ear canal. Mm -hmm. And then from the ear canal, we have the tympanic membrane, which vibrates and converts that sounds now to mechanical uh, sounds. And mm -hmm. from there, it goes through the small, tiny bones. We normally call them the anvil, mm -hmm. you know, the incas, and the steps. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it goes to the cochlea. Now, an injury in any of this pathway can cause hearing loss. The commonest is the outer ear. There are people who are born without the outer ear. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that one, basically, if you don't have the outer ear uh, because of a congenital problem, mm -hmm. then you'll be de definitely have hearing loss. And then, of course, you can have earwax, you can have a foreign body or an infection or a swelling inside the ear, maybe from a tumor or a, you know, or a cancer. 
that can obstruct now hearing loss. So that kind of obstructive uh, type of a hearing loss, we usually call it conductive because it means that there's no good conduction of sound. Traveling, sound is not traveling properly. Mm -hmm. And then in between here, we have now the tympanic membrane or the eardrum and then the small little tiny bones, uh, which we call them the ossicles. So the eardrum either can perforate uh, simple things like a slap or foreign body or an infection can make it perforate. And when that happens, then it means that you'll have a problem with your hearing loss. In between there, uh, what we call the middle ear, uh, this little part inside here, uh, you can have fluid or infections or a slow, uh, or a slow growing uh, uh, tumor that can now again obstruct sound. So you can actually again have conductive type of hearing loss. And then we have the inner part of the ear, which has now the cochlea and the nerve. So this now, uh, either from an infection, uh, either when you are born without a cochlea, uh, either from a genetic uh, error that you had, can cause uh, a problem with your inner ear. Uh, and either things like autotoxicity, medication, head injury, those kind of things can interfere now with your inner ear and the cochlea itself. So, and this type of hearing loss, we usually call it sensor neural type of hearing loss. Mm -hmm. Or you can have a combination of the inner ear and the outer ear, now what we call mixed hearing loss. So you can have a variety of uh, causes depending on the location okay. of the problem. Growing up, I remember, Yes. every weekend was a time for cleaning, yes. if I may put it that way. Yes. So your nails would be cut. Yes. Your mother or your, or your caretaker would actually use sometimes the matchstick with some um, cotton wool on it or, or an earbud for that matter. And mm. we, it's a practice that was, was there. Yes. You knew after every two weeks your ears would be clean. So I'm wondering, should we really clean our ears or is it something that naturally cleans itself? Yeah. So the ear basically is, has a, it's like a conveyor belt. It has a self-cleaning mechanism. So it removes darts from inside to outside. Mm -hmm. And most of the, your outer part, uh, this outer part here, mm -hmm. we, which you call a concha, or in a simple word, we usually call a ball. It's like a ball that collects that that is coming out. Mm -hmm. So usually the, 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 there is a system that has been there. And the system starts from the day you are you're born. And it just does the self-cleaning mechanism. Okay. Now, uh, sometimes when you're doing it yourself, the self mechanism has already cleaned, the wax is almost dropping out, but you feel itchy, and then you use a cotton bud and you take it back. Mm -hmm. So that practice, if you recurrently do that, you eventually cause what you call now wax impaction. So there are people who basically suffer from wax impaction because the cleaning has taken place mm -hmm. and you have retracted it back uh, you know, to the canal. And that practice itself can cause now wax impaction. Uh, if wax is falling out and coming out, the easiest way is just picking a towel and removing it. I always advise even my patient, the biggest and the easiest device that can go in your ear is your big toe or your elbow, which is practically impossible. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, before we delve into the, um, you know, diagnosis and all that, you know, if you're just joining us, we are talking about uh, hearing loss. We are with Dr. Isaac Wahome, who is a clinical audiologist. So far, we've talked about what is the difference between hearing loss and deafness, and even uh, some of the uh, harmful practices that we do that can cause uh, hearing loss. So if you've missed any part of this program, you can always go to our Facebook uh, page, KBC uh, Channel 1 TV, or on uh, YouTube to be able to catch up with more. So Dr. Wahome, let's delve into the diagnosis. I, I'm seeing you have very many gadgets over yeah, here. So yeah. how then do you make diagnosis of hearing loss? So the diagnosis that we make, number one, is understanding the symptoms. People with uh, hearing loss, they suffer from this invisible disabling uh, condition. The fact that uh, you are there, nobody understands what's going on. They have, there are people who even from childhood, they have, you know, funny speech. It's because they can't be able to articulate points uh, and basically because that is what they have been hearing. Mm -hmm. So the first symptoms that people present at home 
you'll see some characteristics. Number one, you'll see people who come with, uh, you know, withdrawal symptoms. At home, they are raising their TV. Uh, the volume is really high. Uh, their ringtones, is, they are really high. They have to keep on telling you, repeat words. You have to shout and so on. Mm -hmm. So the first diagnosis is at home. If you have a child who is not able to speak, has delayed in terms of speech, the first thing you should suspect is hearing loss. Mm -hmm. If you have an adult uh, at home who you have to repeat uh, certain words, they have to increase their volume of the television, uh, you have to shout. Sometimes when you call them and uh, you know they seem like they are ignoring you, they're not giving you attention, that is the first point. Uh, of course, finding out uh, if there is any risk that they have been exposed to, mm -hmm. if there is a road accident, if they have been using, you know, uh, some medications, uh, strong antibiotics, mm -hmm. uh, like gentamicin and so on, okay. if they are on cancer treatment, if they have cancer that basically can cause the hearing loss, that is a high risk. If they have bad infections like meningitis and so on. Mm -hmm. And now these are people now that you refer them to an ENT, a practitioner who basically looks inside the ear with an otoscope. Uh, so the otoscope will just give you the, the, the condition of the outer ear and the, you know, the inner ear, and I mean, the, the, even the, the, the middle ear and the ear canal. So with an otoscope, you can be able to pick things like wax, foreign bodies, infections, middle ear, Also, uh, the otoscope is the one that... This is, uh, this is, this you, is the okay. device that we... The, you normally put in the... Yeah, so this one is usually put inside there and you're able to visualize whether there is anything that is obstructing sound mm -hmm. transmission. Okay. And then from there, if there's nothing that is obstructing that, then they're usually referred now to us as the audiologists to do now the diagnostic part. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we put you like in a soundproof booth and then we put headphones and with an audiometer, we are able now to do some decibels checks mm -hmm. and we come out now with some numbers and figures and we tell you, oh, uh, from the chart representation or from the graph that you have, then you have this type of hearing loss mm -hmm. and it is at this level and we think probably the cause could be this and this and this okay. and this is the rehabilitation that you need. Maybe you could explain to us what you have here. Yeah. So uh, the first point is you have talked about uh, once you are diagnosed with a hearing loss, there's the treatment that is either medical, surgical, or rehabilitation mm -hmm. with a hearing aid device. And here is what we have some hearing device. Uh, and hearing device are basically coming in to amplify sounds. So they're, most of them, they work, they do the work like of the cochlear mm -hmm. to amplify sounds so that you're able to perceive uh, much better mm -hmm. with the device. Uh, so with us, uh, again, we have different types of uh, hearing aids and hearing aids are basically medical devices mm -hmm. that are prescribed by your ENT and practitioners and you come to an audiologist and then we advise you which kind of device you need, mm -hmm. uh, whether you need a cochlear, or whether you need a hearing aid. So for most of the time, for patients who have a hearing loss ranging from mild to severe, we usually advise hearing, uh, hearing aids, especially when you have a sensorineural type of a hearing loss. Okay. And then for cochlear implants, is for those people who have now profound hearing loss. Uh, then we refer them for surgical intervention with a cochlear implant. Hearing is a very important aspect, yes. you know, of human development uh, and, and everything it affects your, 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 your life in every manner yes. because we are communicators yes. so what are that was some of those uh, you know the impact of hearing loss yes. that you know you could you could talk about yeah so basically what I talk about and every time I talk about hearing loss I say human beings are social beings yeah. by nature and it does not matter at what point if this a failure with your hearing loss, then the connection between you and your family and your community uh, basically breaks down. So hearing loss can bring breakdown in families in terms of communications mm -hmm. and so on. And the biggest impact, uh, leave alone the financial impact because the productivity with somebody who has a hearing loss, of course is there. Mm -hmm. But the biggest part is the impact in terms of social isolation where you're not 
able to uh, interact with people freely, you withdraw, uh, you become embarrassed, you feel frustrated because you know you're going somewhere, everybody's talking, they're laughing, and you don't know what they're talking about. So that in itself is the biggest impact you can have as an individual, let alone the people who you are with. For children, the impact is much bigger because then it means the academics is affected, mm -hmm. you know, their job uh, uh, the choice, of choice is things. really affected mm -hmm. and, and so on. Uh, so the financial bit of it, when you talk about uh, WHO figures, it's in billions. The cost of rehabilitation is not cheap. Uh, you know, the choice of education and work, the impact is basically a social and eco economical impact which affects individuals, mm -hmm. communities, and families. Yes. You, you know, Dr. Aria, I don't want us to, to, to finish before we talk about earphones. Yes. It's like everybody has them now. Yes. You know, uh, from the young people to the adults. Yes. How does this impact yes. hearing loss? Because now this one yes. is no longer a congenital issue. Yes. It's no longer just an infection that you, you have no control over. Mm -hmm. So how do earphones affect? Affect, yeah. yeah. So look at it, uh, WHO says 60% of our hearing loss is preventable. Mm -hmm. And look at statistics of a 1 billion young people between 12 years and 35 years are affected with what you call noise-induced hearing loss. Mm -hmm. And these are from harmful practices like listening with an earphone. And one of the biggest problems with sound in, you know, it can affect you suddenly and it can affect you gradually. So suddenly is when there's an explosion somewhere, there's a big bang somewhere, mm -hmm. you can lose your hearing loss uh, suddenly. And then there's a gradual one. The gradual one is the consistent uh, exposure to sound over a long duration of time. And one practice that falls in that category is an ear, in, is an earphone. Mm -hmm. So if your volume is always above 60%, you like loud sounds. Um, if you're using more than six hours in a day, uh, you, uh, what you're doing is that uh, it's, it's, it's like walking on grass every other day. So if there's a path that you're walking on grass every day, what happens with that grass? Mm -hmm. It will be finished. Yeah. And remember, the, the, the inner part of our ear has what we call small, tiny hair cells. So these hair cells, they bend and break every time there's loud sounds. Mm -hmm. So the, the resting part, there's the resting uh, session where they go back to the normal uh, shape and when they loud, uh, there's a, the sound is too big or uh, there's a, a big vibration, they bend. So that, you know, bending basically breaks their hair cells. Okay. Eventually what you end up is a hearing loss. Mm -hmm. So basically ear uh, phones, ear plugs, uh, I mean like earphones and headphones of a long duration of time gradually uh, you know, work on your hair cells, they break them, and so on, and you, you might end up with a hearing loss. And especially now, Dr. Ari, where we, we, people are using technology to communicate, yes. you know, when you're on Zoom yes, uh, yes, yes. and all these things. So yes. I think maybe what you're trying to say also is just being mindful of the volume. Yes. Of, of, uh, yes. You're not saying don't listen to music with yes. the earphones, but just be mindful yes. of, of the volume. And so just as we wrap up, mm -hmm. there are myths and facts about, you yes. know, hear, hear, he, ear he, hygiene, Yes, you know. So maybe in just like a few seconds, you can just touch on that. Yeah. yeah. So the myth number one that I hear every other time is that when you have hearing loss, it's basically you have been bewitched. <laughs> um, and it's, 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 it's just a belief. Hearing loss can come incidentally from anything. It can be severe, acute. Uh, number two, the other biggest myth is that uh, when you are having a device like this one, a hearing aid, is that it will cause more hearing loss. So people are shying off to come uh, for help because they know probably when I put an, a device that has a battery, it is going to make more damage. There's infrared, there's you know, radiation. With, no, it's not like that. These are just electronic devices that are amplifying sounds on behalf of your cochlea. So that is the biggest miss. The other one is that uh, sometimes putting, if you are having itchiness 
or there's an infection, you have to put gunpowder, you have to put, you know, oil, uh, f those kind of things, foreign things in your ear, so that you can uh, either treat whatever is causing that. Uh, th those are just uh, some, of some of the practices that we do, and we usually say you don't need to do all that. Just go see an ENT practitioner or the closest uh, dispensary, go s have uh, somebody check your ear, mm -hmm. or if you can have an access to an audiologist, come, we'll have a look at you, and we can treat uh, whatever is causing itchiness or infection in your ear. Thank you so much, Dr. Aizwa Kwahome, who is a clinical audiologist. Thank you so much for the information that you've shared with us today. I'm sure all of us, including myself, have learned something uh, with all the information that you've given us today, that ear or hearing loss is not just a matter of you know, um, something that happens to you congenitally when you're born, yes. or even um, an infection, but you can actually be the person that uh, is responsible for your, your hearing yes. uh, loss and all that. So thank you so much also, our viewers, uh, for tuning in today and listening in. Uh, I hope you've learned a lot about uh, hearing loss, the difference between hearing loss and deafness, and some of the causes and some of the hearing aids that you can actually uh, uh, be able to go for in case you suspect yourself to have hearing loss. So thank you so much for making time for us today. Remember, you can always uh, get more of this if at all you've missed the program on our YouTube channel and even on our Facebook, that is KBC Channel 1 TV. So until next time, we hope to see you again. Mm -hmm.